Welcome, everyone, to episode six of the Synthel Gear podcast, the only podcast where we talk about Synthel Gear, except that's not true at all. Tonight, I am joined by my wonderful co host, C Tactics, the man who has been chosen to host the Academy Awards this December. How are you doing tonight, C? No, I wasn't. <laughs> you are now. How can you decide these things? How do I decide any of these things I introduce you with? Well, that's right. That does make sense. <laughs> I, I I forget most of them, but I, I'm sure this is probably the, one of the least crazier ones. Yeah, I just come up with something like half an hour before I think, oh, this is a good idea. Let's do it. And then I hope I remember by the time I introduce C. That's a pretty good so, way to think. Speaking of introducing C, Simple Gear Episode 6. Tsubasa's grandfather uses seal invasion on Tsubasa to further... They're going all crazy and stuff. And it just so happens that they have a super powerful weapon in the storage, lol. Also, that lol, I actually wrote the lol in there because it's funny. Also, they summon the Holy Grail, and now we're watching Fate. I kind of think we've been watching Fate for a while because they keep having like these historical artifacts that the Sinfo Gear users use. Like uh, the spear he used last season was like the spear that was used to stab Jesus, so. Remember that one time I stabbed Jesus? different jesus i think i think there was a crazy theory we had about fire force on king of anime last night not i say we it's more of me where uh jesus comes down and and starts uh banging out with with the blonde girl the nun and he has like two automatic shotguns and he just i feel like this is something out of that anime where jesus and buddha are roommates (laughs) oh i remember that is a show Yes, I remember this. I think Potato talked about it. Ah, yeah, that could be. We should watch that at some point. But anyway, uh, start of the episode, we have a bit of a recap. And something I only noticed in the recap was Hibiki saying that her and Miku would talk later. And that feels like the foreshadowing is saying something is going to happen to Miku. And then at the end of the last episode, something did happen. And then this episode, we found out what and all that fun stuff. Can I just say, they introduced that guy just to have him get sliced in the neck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and didn't we guess that last uh, podcast? We did. Like he... Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was like, what are my things? We're like, they're just gonna they're gonna have him just to slice his head off. Yeah, like they need they need the blood to come out of someone. So it's like he he made the most sense because he has no pot armor because he was just introduced. So yeah, we were right. Sad face. Exactly. I like it when we're right. <laughs> and uh, it, and yeah, then we have the police who saw the blood of the ninja guy whose name I don't remember, and I probably should have written down. Notice that they had smashed the security cameras. So he actually got to do some stuff this episode that we'll talk about later. Oh, he got to do some things. He got to do some stuff. Some he things. Got, he got the most ridiculous thing in the episode. Once again, he he has like... We'll, we'll talk about it in a moment. Yes, we will. But yeah, he was noticing that the camera was smashed. Uh, and then the commander, was when they saw that Miku had disappeared, he was thinking on how, he, how she could be a vessel for a god. So we'll, that, I think, will definitely happen to some degree. First of all, we saw a guy swabbing a door handle. Oh, yes. That's ridiculous. So think some about it. Think about it. I, there's also some very ridiculous things that happen plot-wise in this episode. But I'm just going to nitpick on this one thing just because it. I don't know why. He's swabbing the door handle to find a half human half animal demon thing oh i didn't notice he found that it's ridiculous why would he be swabbing a door handle on a car they're not driving a car or are they how did he know that maybe granted if they took miku and elf nine they probably would have taken their car with them assuming they were using the car but that's not important right now but we don't even know whose, whose car it was it was just a car why are they it, swabbing it, the handle of a car? Could have been someone who lived there. It was Hibiki's car. Hibiki! <laughs> yes, but speaking of Hibiki, she was definitely affected by Miku and Elfheim being taken. And the Chris was trying to cheer her up, which, considering Chris is a lot of times annoyed by Hibiki, but shows that there is a good friendship there. Yeah, it's not just all... The relationship isn't just 
Hibiki yelling Chris Chan. Yeah, and then exactly. Trying to hug her. There's more exactly. there. It's like it's like me and C. Yes, he yells my name a lot, but we actually do care about each other. I I yell everybody's name a lot. You do. You, you just love everyone. I just. It's true. It's so true. I just just you know. All you need is love. Do 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 do. Oh, okay. Not for that. <laughs> At least this is a musical anime, so you singing it makes sense. This is true. <laughs> but we also definitely got a lot more of indicating that uh, Fudo and his group was behind the kidnapping because the Intel group was supposed to be protecting Miku and Elf Nine, but because of the investigation, they stopped doing what they're doing, which really seems strange. Like, why would you not have your Intel people still working? I'm probably thinking about this too much. Well, I mean, once again, we had some really ridiculous things happen. It's it. Uh, I think this episode is was highly entertaining, but man, the logic. <laughs> In any other show but Simple Gear, I, there'd be issues. I mean, it, it it is an issue. Don't get me wrong. But it's entertaining. <laughs> so. Exactly, Simple Gear is meant to be entertaining. First of all. And I feel like they're almost completely self-aware with some of the things that happened. I mean, the ninja guy, like, we'll get to that, but that, yes. That's... Only a self-aware show could do that. Um, but uh, we also learned that Miku can, can serve as a vessel for the, the, the thing, the god thing. Right. God hand. Because now, I guess now we're in Berserk. Um, okay. Yeah. This is a better form of Berserk after all. Ah! You're going to make people angry at you. I already do. Do I need to start talking about Dragon Maid again? No, no. <laughs> They're going to hate you, Rising. So about Kagura-sama. Oh, Kagura no. Wait, isn't it Kaguya? I don't care. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's already... Th They're going to kill you. They're going to find you I... and kill you. At least I'm not talking about Trigon or anything. <sighs> then I'm going to find you and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 let's move on before I start bringing up Cowboy Bebop. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> but speaking about things that uh, would make you want to kill people, there's something interesting with one of the lollies this episode. And that was how uh, Kirika was was not surprised and knew it was a diversion, which seemed awfully smart for, for coming from her. Yeah. That's all so, I got. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I didn't notice this at all, so... Yeah, like I wrote down like uh, saying Kirika isn't surprised and it was a diversion. And then is she smart? <laughs> Did she go to school this week? Chances are, maybe. What, wait, what if she's the one who discovers a final way to defeat the villain with her simple gear logic? She ends up uh, turning into Mako. Oh, no. No, this is how they do it. This is how they do it. They get She gets a bottle of ketchup. And, and squirts uh, it into one of the the evil bad guy's eyes, and they're like, "Ah, I can't see. It's the damn, the damn cornstarch and tomato extract." Is there cornstarch and ketchup? I I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, let us know in the comments if there's cornstarch and ketchup. It's, and it's like definitely not. It's very bad for you. Right. And we also got another interesting insight from Kirika saying that uh, Subasa's heart had been torn into pieces. Oh, yeah, I remember that part, yeah. And just how on edge she was. Like, they were talking about what had happened, and Tsubasa felt like they were blaming her for it. It just shows how Tsubasa is internalizing all the blame for everything that she sees as being her fault of bad stuff happening around them. You know, you know it's like Tsubasa is like, she's keeping it all to herself. That's what it feels like. That's what, that's what it seems like. It seems like she's not talking to anybody about anything and she's just taking on the burden of, of it all and it's just it's it's building up right now right and it's like she because of her failures or at least how she sees them she doesn't feel she's deserving to like share it with others or to share the burden with others right yeah yeah um and because well a, a big reason for that is likely because of the seal invasion right yeah that's probably it's interesting because I don't think that's like completely changing her, but it's like amplifying parts of her personality. That that may be it. Where it's, it's yeah, it's in it's amplifying and influencing those parts in her that are uh, less. Um, oh god, what is the word? 
or no less secure maybe her, yeah well the amplifying only amplifying her insecurities yeah the well last episode we saw it made the noise appear to be um the enemy whose name i forgot me yeah, Milark, and then uh, this episode when the commander used it on her, it did not seem like it changed anything per se, but like made her more willing to agree with him. Right. Yeah, it made her also. Yeah, it made her question. Like he he was like, just question like why you're here, and then she did that. She questions why she was here and why she wasn't. Yeah, like I guess doing like, something else. He seemed to be saying like Song is not the place she needs to be to protect people. So right. it seems like he's trying to get her to come over to his side, and that will likely lead to a conflict with the other Sympho Gears. Right, exactly. Um, and then Subas is going to be like, I have the high ground, Hibiki, and Hibiki's like, don't do it! And, and then Hibiki punches Subasa into the moon. Fudo is evil! Not exactly. from my perspective. <laughs> but I, I thought it was also pretty cool. Uh, in, in this scene where they use seal invasion on Tsubasa again. Um, Great. Um, because she likes working on bikes. Oh, yeah, that was a cool like uh, tidbit. Because we see her riding her bike a lot. Yeah, she was draining the oil on her bike for some reason. Yeah, you need to do that every 3,000 miles, I think. Well, I mean, she blows them up, so. <laughs> How many bikes does she have? Yeah. I was like, which bike is this? Is this the new one or or the new new one? She probably has like 10 bikes in reserve for when she blows one up. Oh, man. <laughs> I oh, yeah. just love it. They like open up a garage and there are like 10 bikes there. And she's with the other one saying, here are my backups in case I blow up the other <laughs> one I'm currently using. Let's take them. <laughs> yeah. They all like turn into giant swords as well. That's <laughs> really, her bikes are very. Um, it's like, like a transformer. Well, yeah. Robots in disguise. But it's also like part of her Sinfo gear somehow. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe the Sinfo gear transforms the bike. Maybe that's like the part of it. I don't know. That would make sense for Sinfo gear. It would. It would indeed. Um, because nothing apparently makes sense in Sinfo gear this episode. <laughs> exactly. Uh, something else that didn't make sense is why did that guy explode into green when the uh, Milark killed him? Yep, they didn't explain that. I think it was like, oh, that's how they're going to get rid of the body. So so I think it's literally another plot device where they're like, oh, crap, now what do we do with the body? She's not going to carry the body. That's going to look weird in the scene or whatever. So Yeah. Like, there's going to be blood that's going to be everywhere. It's going to, like, leave a trail. So let's just, you know, he's going to disappear in the green. Maybe they'll explain it later, but probably not. Probably not. I imagine, like, if... I imagine, like, maybe they could explain it in this way that would make sense and just be like, yeah, that's what happens when she consumes people because she's a vampire. Uh, yeah, I, I'll go with that explanation. Either way, it's it's terrible logic. <laughs> it, it's literally, once again, it's just, we had an idea for this scene. We didn't want to think about it too much. Right. <laughs> Which is unfortunate, but it is simple here. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not complaining too much. Uh, then they, then after that scene, we went back to Elf Nine. He woke up uh, with uh, Milark and the Ezra, I think, was the other one, or Elsa. Elsa. Vinet. No, not the cat one. Oh, oh, the one nobody cares yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, I think her name's Elsa, if I remember right. Uh, let it go. Yes, that's that's why I remembered Elsa because I thought it was a Frozen reference. But yes, uh, we have uh, Elf Nine waking up there, and uh, they want to Elf Nine to activate something. She thinks it's the uh, Chartedo de Tufarkas. I like I like that when 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 Milark goes up to her and grabs her face and like stretches it out, and she's like, "Is this the Charte?" <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> well, they also like she introduced herself as if she was a maid at welcoming her master home, which was just anime that yep that's anime <laughs> she's like i want to do that once now i'm gonna throw you halfway across the room oh yes i thought that was pretty great when she threw the lolly across the room you would think that what are you trying to say uh you already know what i'm saying i don't understand exactly so then we have uh we also had miku feeling like she was falling and she doesn't want hibiki to worry so that's like why she needs to wake up and that was just an interesting insight into Miku's mindset. 
Yeah. They they need to have uh, marriage counseling. Uh, yeah, I think after one of them is kidnapped and after fighting, marriage counseling would be a good thing. <laughs> Hibiki and Miku need to go see some people. Hibiki's going to be like, I was kidnapped. This is this is really just stressful. Hibiki's going to be like, see? You see what I mean? This is what she pulls all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you get kidnapped one time. I was trying to protect you. I was attacked by noise. You're going to blame me for everything. It's not my fault that you have the power to host a god or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody literally cares. No one. <laughs> Okay, now I want to see like a marriage counseling for some figure characters. But it's like terribly depressing. So like, Subasa and Maria will, will. Oh, what would that? What would that be like? It's like Subasa, you're you're always mad. You were never not mad. You keep talking about your grandfather. It's terrible. <laughs> Yes, I get that 70,000 people died during the concert, but just need to get over it, get back to a healthy life, and not to try to sharpen your sword and cut candles so much. Did I lose C? Did Discord? Okay, uh, C has muted himself for some reason, so I will continue talking about the next thing on here. And um, yeah, they're back to Elf 9. Uh, possibly activating the today the day I have no idea how to pronounce it, but she says it's impossible to control it, but instead they want her to activate some sort of generator. And we don't really know like what the generator is. I'm guessing it ties into the relic somehow, but we don't really know how or exactly why or what she'll be activating. And then Miku feeling like she's falling, she wa doesn't want TVQ to worry. And because they took Miku, I'm guessing it's going to tie into like why they uh, what they want Elf Nine to activate, and uh, yeah, any thoughts on that? See, um, yes. Okay, I'm glad you have thoughts. I don't know what's going on in that scene. There's a bunch of like puppets or whatever. Yeah, it was like well, it was kind of like a, t a Tiki who was the robot from last season. I'm surprised you remember that name. I looked it up. I just remember her as Lolly that was cut in half and was and got that guy killed. Yeah, also so I'm wondering the if they're like Yeah, that phone was weird. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well we did later on learn that the thing that they found in the military base was evidence of a leak between the uh the enemies and the Kansai organization, and that was the anti Kaish our gear, which is what was which was what was used to power Tiki last season, and it had a hundred nineteen point six chance to be in the mat or of matching. Yeah, how do they get odds that were like literally above correct? Uh, it just shows they have really good uh, statistical analysis, or they have a bug in their computer program. I imagine it's the bug. What if it's like the bug, and they open the briefcase, and it's there's just nobody checked. Yeah, that, that would be funny. Like someone that looks at this thing, there's actually no evidence. You should have known that there was an error when you got over 100% chance. What does a over 100% chance even look like? Like it's um, got to come with something extra, right? You got to get like, you know, like something with it. Um, it's like the chance of there being a song in a Sinfo Gear episode is over 100% because there's a chance you get two songs. Exactly. See? Those are those are correct odds. Yes, that is how math works, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. I like the way that you math. And you know what else we like? Uh explosions? Yes, but also make you train with a punching bag. Do oh yes. Wait. Yes. Mar yes. She yes, you're right. She did. She Maria trained with a punching bag. Yeah, that was just a cool scene showing her desire to help Subasa to defeat the villains and just be cool because she's Maria. Yeah, Maria. She, she, oddly enough, after she was like the main villain, she hasn't really done too much. Yeah, like you get some parts with her, but it always feels like her development is alongside someone else's and not much on her own. Exactly. And so this is why in this season... Subasa and Mario are going to kiss, and they're going to make out, and then they're going to do probably a little bit more than that, but that's not going to be on the screen. Yes, that'll be in C's fan fictions. Or the OVA. 
are there some Fakir OVAs? There are. There's like eight. Uh, we should watch them. They're like shorts, though. They're like two minutes long. Okay. And they have like a totally different art style. Okay, so they're like those OVAs. Pretty much. Oh, we also got some of uh, the song uh, between uh, Maria and her old friend, who I actually kind of forgot who she was, but she was the original user of that Sympho gear and her younger sister. Maria has a sister? She did, but then she died to uh, try to stop the Nielheim, Nielheim, whatever that creature was from season two. Yeah, it's been a while since we saw yeah, season it's two. Yeah, it's been a while, and I'm trying to think. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. We did get a flashback of her again. Yeah, and I liked nuts. how they're, I like how they're trying to like pull all these things from the past back into the present story. Even though I can't remember half of them, but you know, it is. it's the more yeah. obscure ones. It's like I can't remember like the big ones, but like, yeah, like you remember the basic plot outline, but you forget. Oh yeah, this character was important. They did this thing, and that's how it all ties together. Exactly. Egg. Egg. Exactly. Huh? Eggs. Yeah. Get the fun? Get it? No. Fuck. Yeah, and then uh, uh, Maria was remembering the song that she had between her sister and her from before, like she had heard it somewhere else recently. So uh, that's definitely going to tie into it's something. It's the chat hair. Sure. Exactly. And I think it might tie into whatever the noble phantasms are this season. There's noble phantasms? Well, Simple Gear is equivalent to them. Hibiki, what would Hibiki's be? Excalibur. Yeah, probably. It would probably have to be Sabasan. <laughs> Just, yeah, that that's... Big. Well, Hibiki's yellow, Excalibur's yellow. It makes sense. Also, I can't think of anything else that would that would fit, actually. What would, uh, let's see. Subasa would be Assassin. Yeah, some type of sword. That or would really, make sense. Or Lancer. Lancer or Assassin. Probably... Probably Lancer. I would say Lancer. Well, I mean, she yeah, can also it's... do Saber. Right, but it feels like Tsubasa is not like the Excalibur using type of person. Maria can use... Can be, uh... Oh, God. Well, she has changed like Ryder. Yeah, yeah, she's got boob chains. So, yeah, you could definitely do Ryder. Right, and then uh, See, Chris. Chris would be some type of ranged thing, so kind of like a caster, but... Archer. Oh, yes, Archer. That would make sense, because Archer can pull out pull weapons out of nowhere, and so can Chris. The murder lollies, what would they be? Um, do we have anyone who uses a scythe in Fate? I'm sure. There's got to be. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is or Fate, sure, after Fate. all. They have, like, all of the tropes. Exactly. Uh, okay, uh, Karakis is the Grim Reaper, who is a character in Fate, probably. I guess Lancer. Yeah, because uh, they, like, they cause, both cause death. Yeah. Uh, chainsaw Lolly. What would she be? God damn it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's, let's know in the comments what their noble phantasms would be. If you're actually watching this. I guess since she can, like, shoot the chainsaws. I guess, I guess Archer. Yeah, so maybe she's another Archer. She would be Robin Hood, because Robin Hood is an Archer. There you go. There you go. What would, so Miku, what would Miku, Miku would be Shiro. Yeah, exactly, because friendship. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And in some cases it becomes an incredibly powerful, awesome character. Exactly. See, this is why fake loot is good. This is why we need to watch more Sinfo Gear. <laughs> exactly. But now, speaking of more Sinfo Gear, we get to the most absurd part of the entire episode. Oh my God. <laughs> that is when you have the ninja guy coming back with the evidence of the link between them and the Kansai organization, but then Vanessa attacks with boob missiles, and then he does some very creative driving that makes absolutely no sense and then he's about to be attacked again he uses a ninja technique called ninja technique car clone like he was a naruto character he literally uses car clones <laughs> like they had that like simple gear attack call out background thing when he does it too oh my god 
Oh, it's so good. <laughs> they were so self-aware of this. There's no way when they were making this that they were serious. They have to, they had to be on so much cocaine to think of this. Well, exactly. They're probably thinking, okay, so we have this guy. He's being attacked. He's trying to do drive and dodge him, but that can only work so long. Uh, we need them to like have a final blow that's about to hit him before the Sifu Gears show up. So how's he going to dodge it? And someone says, well, I just watched Naruto recently. What if he uses a substitution jutsu? <laughs> Which is what he did in the last season, I think, or maybe the season before. Oh, yeah, the last time he used, a sub he used substitution. This time he just used the clone jutsu. Oh, man. Oh, man. This this was just... <laughs> and then he drives his car sideways up, like, not even like a wall. It was like... It no, was he like did it before. He did? Yeah, that was before he did the clone, and then he was doing like the after image after the clone. This is ridiculous. This whole thing was just so, so dumb. And, and then the boob rockets. Oh, the boob rockets we had like in episode two or three. But this time you could actually see the the rockets exit the boobs. <laughs> the Sifu gear is great. Also, how are they so jiggly? If they're warheads, uh, they need to be tightened more so they can stay on, stay centered. She needs more maintenance done. Oh, so so that's how that's how they're gonna defeat her. They're gonna be like your jiggly boob rockets, not gonna get. And they had like the oh my god, they have like the like red dots on the rockets, with like the nipples. <laughs> oh, you yeah, missed that, but yes, that makes sense. It's ridiculous. It is. And then but yes, it did. It did actually. It gets maybe a little bit more ridiculous because she's like, and then there was this this super weapon glove thing. Oh, you know about it? It's like super powerful and stuff. And that's and it was like it was about to go into a flashback or whatever of like her explaining it. And then she just cuts she cuts off and just goes, "Just kidding," and shoots shoots him oh, with no, that was when she was ex That's when she was explaining uh, Maria Sinfogear to her. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but that was that was also great. It was like, okay, you're going to use the flashback time, and then realize, just kidding, I was uh, stalling her time to set you up. <laughs> but it, yeah, because I don't know like how true that was. But yes, we have uh, Maria and Chris to fight her. I hope Maria takes the information. And it's like this is what happens, and then they like run it to like confirm it, and they're like, that's not true. <laughs> Well, well, I guess she did say just kidding, so... The Sifogear Wiki said it was true, so I don't know if they mentioned that some other time that we did not know about, or what? Doesn't matter, Boob Rockets. Exactly. But yes, after uh, the Sifogears just showed up, uh, Vanessa it was no longer going after the ninja guy, but like sort of giving that up. Instead, she was saying she wanted to occupy time for the Sifogear users. And so like, like, what I want to know is why she was doing that. Is it because, like, by keeping them occupied, it's too late for them to stop whatever else is going on? Or is there some other reason? Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure there is another reason. Yeah, well, I think it might be there. To, she was trying to distract them until Elf-9 did whatever she was doing at the end. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, boy. Yeah. But uh, before that, we had uh, Vanessa trying to go after Maria, trying to use some of that like psychological warfare stuff, and talking about how her sinful gear is found in Iraq during the war. But then, so I was just kidding before she shot her. Yeah, she also has machine gun fingers. Yeah, I think we've seen those before. I don't know how those work. I don't know how anything with Vanessa works. <laughs> she. <sighs> She's a robot, and it looks like oh man, like the the way like her her limbs come undone to shoot rockets at people. You're like oh she's like ninety nine percent metal, but then she's got like boobs just bouncing everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Someone was a drunk while they were making this episode. Uh, Chris Chan suits a freaking missile at her, and this is the best part. She gets oh, knocked yes. out. Well, well, actually, a funny part is it, it, the missile knocks her away, and then the missile explodes. She doesn't get hit by the explosion. Well, there's one missile. Like, she fired it at Vanessa. Vanessa dodged it, thought she was okay. The Mario used her chain to, like, pull it back around. I guess, maybe. But she gets, like, hit. Uh, 
And she gets like, you know, she hits a wall. And Chris runs up and says, put your hands up in English. Yes, it was bad English, but English. It was so bad that I didn't. It took me a moment to be like, did she just say that in English? I had to rewind, rewatch it again. I'm like, that's like really, really bad English. But she definitely says, put your hands up. Again, very self-aware. Uh, something else which I didn't quite get the point until I did some research is uh, where was this? Oh, uh, Chris and Mario landed on the guy's car, and he made a comment. I want you to show me the end of the world. Oh, yeah. And I had no idea what that was a reference to, but it turns out that's a reference to Revolutionary Girl Utena. I guess so. Never but, seen yeah. it. Yeah, if you're wondering why he was saying something random, that's why. It's just another reference. Put another one in there. Yep, this show enjoys what it's doing too much. <laughs> yeah, and then they summon the, the Holy Grail. Exactly, because we don't know what it is, but it has been summoned, it has been activated, and Miku is going to help Hibiki punch the moon in episode 12. Hibiki, my shining star! That's Ooh, what if the shining star on the moon, like, if there's something there? Whoa. That would make sense. What if Hibiki punches the sun? That would make sense, too, for Simpho Gear. <laughs> Miku punches the moon, Hibiki punches the sun. I and like then Chris it. fires missiles at all the stars. <laughs> Just destroys destroys the universe. Yes, and then the show truly turns into Garn Logan. Oh god. Oh, I don't think they'll actually start throwing galaxies around, but you never know a simple gear. At this point, might as well. Yeah, I mean, why not? If you're gonna go out with the final season, right? Might as well go out with a bang, just like Chris's transformation scene. Oh yeah, we got to see Chris's transformation scene again, and it was still beautiful. <laughs> it was. It's still those those bullets. I don't know why she's keeping bullets in there, but well, something else I know is that she had three bullets fly out of there, but then she had six bullets she loaded into her gun. So where'd the other three come from? Oh no. I realize that I don't. I might not want the answer to that question. Don't touch those bullets. <laughs> don't, anyways. Yeah, you shouldn't touch bullets. They're bad for you. I was just gonna say, just you know, because there's probably boob sweat on them. I wonder would that affect how bullets are like fires? Probably, probably, probably not. Okay. Okay, I need to go to the shooting range to test some things. <laughs> So, any other uh, comments or thoughts on the episode, C? Since I think I got through all my notes. Well, I don't think we talked about this yet, but boob rockets? Yes, we definitely need to talk about that one since I don't think we ever have before. Uh, also, drove cars sideways and car clones. Um, I don't think we talked about those. Uh, also, I, would, I Chris... want him to like fight more, too. <laughs> him and the commander. Yes, yes, I need to see it. It, it would Just be perfect. The... No, they team up, they have a song together. It's It would be amazing. It needs to happen. If it doesn't, I will yeah. cry. I mean, he does have that, that like bonus song that wasn't actually in the show. They're going to add it. I hope they do. That, that would be perfect. It's going to happen next episode. The commander is going to be like, I got to go out here and teach these ladies how to fight. And he goes out no, and he gets his ass kicked. He ends up going to fight Fudo. Well, wouldn't that be more of, like, Tsubasa's thing? Yes, but I think a commander needs to do it, too. Maybe Tsubasa is the one who gets a finishing blow or something. Since, it, since this is, like, you know, like a bunch of anime references this season, uh, they could have, like, I don't know, have, it in, have, like, Tsubasa's arc end, like, a bunch of those samurai anime. You haven't seen too many samurai anime. I can't really say much, because there's a lot. <laughs> That are uh, that are really good that I can bring up, but uh, that would spoil. Especially Blade of the Immortal, so I'm not going to say that one especially. All right, I'm going to go watch Blade of the Immortal now. Good night. Wait, you can't. I saw you now. That won't stop. Let's like the Zero podcast. I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, they've commented on it. I don't understand. But yes, overall, uh, good episode, I thought. I, it still feels like there's a lot of build-up that I'm excited to see the payoff for. Yeah, it's still like... I, I don't think we've hit the point where we're like, okay, we're getting into Endgame yet. Yeah, because all, 
we're like episode six, so we're on halfway through the season. Yeah, I still feel like they're not they're not showing everything yet. Yeah, they seem to be setting up a lot, but they're like seems like there are like two or three things that still need to come into play. I say maybe maybe next episode is when it really starts. But if I were a betting man, probably episode after next. Yeah, that would make sense. Like next episode is more like climax and then they or a build up and then they have like a mid season climax that propels us to the final arc or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, they might bring up more of like Chris's past because I think she's one of the characters they've not really touched on as much this season. How could they? I don't know, but I like we got a bit of uh, Mario. We got some of the lollies, so that was more than like growing as people and like as simple gear users. How could they? So we need answer. More... We need more Chris. I thought you were gonna say we need more lollies. No. No lollies. We need more. We have Chris teaming up with the lollies. No. We've already seen that. We need more Chris. Is there a dog parking? It's probably, the dog's probably angry about there not being enough Chris. All right, so send for gear, listen to the dog, make more Chris doing cool stuff and getting character development and all that. Exactly, egg. Exactly. Egg. (laughs) All right, I'm out of stuff to talk about. Egg. So, see, see, where can they find you? They can find me, egg, exactly where they think they can find me. Egg. Sea Tactics, egg. Also, Egg Bento Channel, Egg. I do Egg podcasts like Egg King of Anime and Egg Fruits Basket podcast. It took a minute. I don't know why. And Egg this podcast, but this is on this Egg channel. So exactly do what you exactly should be exactly doing. If you cannot find a specific podcast from here, I worry about you. This is exactly true. I like the way you exactly said that. Exactly hit the subscribe button and exactly ring the bell. Because if you exactly don't, I'm going to go over there and break your eggs. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. And I would say we will be back next week, but we're going to be taking a break since I'm going to an anime convention. Yeah. But if you are at Anime Fest and you want to talk about Symphony Gear with me, uh, come find me. I won't be that hard to find. Except for they probably don't know how you look like. I'm very tall. Trust me, that's enough to know who I am. <laughs> I, I mean, there's probably a lot of tall people at Anime Fest. Have you, do you know how tall I am? Uh, eight foot three? Almost. What? How can you be almost eight foot three? Okay, not almost. That's like really tall. Let's just say me and airplanes and uh, uh, door frames don't get along. Are you like seven foot two? It's getting closer. Seven foot three? Good night. Seven foot one? No, less than seven foot. Oh, okay, six nine. Sixty nine. Are you sixty nine? No. Oh, damn it. Six eight. Close. Six seven. I think so. That's pretty tall. Yes. You and should... uh, if I if I had more room in my suitcase, I would pack a uh, commander's uh, cosplay thing. Oh, you totally. Sh- no, that's just how you. That's how you just. That's what you wear there. Well, I guess I have that one red shirt. I just need a tie to tuck in my pocket. It would be close. See? Just get a tie. It's fine. All right. Um, okay. I'll be getting a tie while this podcast renders or whatever it does. So we will be seeing you next time we talk about Sinful Gear. So follow me on Twitter because I'll post things about that. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi. Bye? Yeah. Are we buying right now? Goodbye.